Thank you again, Tom. And now it's your turn, Brian. So um, I'm really excited to hear a bit more about use case, your use case. I remember you telling me about like one year ago. So it's a pleasure to hear it uh, today. So if you can start sharing your screen, perfect. And that's all yours now. Great. Thanks so much, Flora. Well, good morning. Good afternoon. Good evening from wherever you are. Uh, thank you for the opportunity to speak with you today and welcome to my part of Days or Enterprise Day. I uh, hope you all enjoyed Tom's presentation. I know I did. Uh, I didn't have a chance to ask any questions because the presenters don't get to ask questions, but uh, I have some questions for Mr. Harris. I'll ask him later. So with that, I will go ahead and jump right in. So I'm Brian Watts. I am the platform integration architect for UHub. And I'm also one of the Austin Atlassian community leaders. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and start off with a quick description of what UHub is and our parent company, WPP, to kind of give you some overview of, of the, the size and the complexity of the organization I'm dealing with. And then I'm going to show you how we utilize Profields and some other applications in the Atlassian ecosystem to solve some very uh, difficult business challenges at scale. So with that, a quick introduction to WPP. So WPP is our parent slash holding company. Um, I'm not sure if any of you are familiar, but they're the largest advertising conglomerate in the world. They comprise of 3,500 different individual business entities working in hundreds of different offices all around the globe, comprising of most major markets anywhere. It is complex and it is complicated. Even since this slide was made two weeks ago, this slide is already out of date as well because AKQA and Gray have now merged. So it's an ever evolving set of business units that all have to collaborate and work together at a very deep level and with as much efficiency as possible. You know, these teams don't just need to share documents. And they don't, they, don't, they don't need to just have a place to chat, right? They need end-to-end -end information continuity, and they needed it yesterday, really. So with that, enter UHub. So UHub is a, it, it was just a phrase that we made up. It, it became a, a neutral business term that we could leverage inside WPP and essentially host the Atlassian tool set at its data center tier in a massive multi-tenanted environment, leveraging all the existing agency data, the agency tools, the people, every, everything, every, everything that the agency had to offer. The entire Atlassian ecosystem is hosted by us. You see the, the, the swath of applications there, everything is available to, to the teams. Basically, if you wanna think about it, it's Atlassian as a service. Right, you know, we're offering this in a very structured, a very highly available way, and the teams rely on it and depend on it. To the point that UHub has its own staff of Atlassian experts that are stationed around the globe that work on a 24 by five follow the sun type support. So when business is occurring in a time zone, someone will be there in that time zone from UHub to help from whatever sort of business needs may come up. We essentially virtually embed ourselves into each business unit as they need support. And then we provide it using Atlassian best practices, making sure that WPP uh, corporate directives are followed um, because this is a immensely large organization. I can't really stress that enough to the point that our roles sort of become as a, oh, sorry, and many more add-ons as well. Sorry about that. <laughs> Uh, but essentially, our roles become one of trying to mitigate Conway's law. So Conway's law simply states that organizations will produce systems that mirror their communication structures. So I'll get, kind of give you an example. So let's say you had a deliverable for a large client, right? And you had three creative teams working on that piece of deliverable. And maybe they didn't have all the same direction. Or maybe, you know, one of them thought this was like a you know, like an outdoor ad, but this is actually for a magazine, right? Like if you don't have all your data aligned, you're going to be wasting time and that doesn't help anybody. So UHub accepts 
that WPP is going to be this complex entity with teams spread out everywhere with, with tendrils spread out all across the globe as I'm about to show you. Our mandate is to align these structures, align these organizational structures through smarts and software. Because if you look at the amount of collaboration that is occurring inside WPP, oh no, I went too far. So what you see here is a representation of a unit of time in where we record the number of collaborations between business units. So if you see this here, this outside ring here is comprised of the operating companies of WPP. Operating companies is merely a way for us to describe a business unit as part of a geography, right? So uh, a, a particular region of the world and then the business unit that's contained in that part of the world. So each of these individual lines that you see here become those instances of collaboration between two business units. This was pre-COVID as well. This was way before COVID. This was 2018, I believe, or 2019. So this is the amount of work that's transpiring on a daily basis. It's immense. It, it's almost a fabric of work that's going on. So what we had to do here is you know, we have program managers that run these campaigns for very, very large clients and, and they're foundations of project knowledge. And they're authoritative when they set a direction for a campaign, right? So if we treat these campaign program managers as like a single source of program truth, kind of to borrow the Atlassian phrase, when we create additional work or as Tom alluded to earlier about democratizing the data and giving the people the means to input the data, it reduces the risk of having bad data input or have that bad data propagate out and then pollute other projects or other processes going forward. So when you see each individual line of collaboration here, when you see a large swath of work, that could be a production studio collaborating with that office. And when you see the individual lines, those are the specialists that are maybe bringing their special talents into that particular organization to get work done massively complex, massively multi-tenanted. Everyone's working together to get things done. So with this number of teams, um, it really drives home, let me stay here for a second. So it really drives home the fact that, you know, we have to use a lot of tools in the Atlassian ecosystem to kind of get this stuff done, right? So I'm going to go through now some of the plugins, some of the things that we're using as part of the solution I'm going to describe here uh, and to kind of go through it. Um, the kind of the first add-on that we really use here is Elements. Elements is a product that lets you bring in data from external data sources and then leverage them during like a project creation or doing issue creation. You know, think if you needed to query a financial system for like the available job codes, or I think if you needed to query a timekeeping system so that you knew the number of worked hours versus planned hours or available hours. So, having that data available when you're planning would be a huge benefit. But again, now you have to now spread that data across a bunch of tasks and a project, right? It becomes very messy. If, if there's any chance to change any of that data, it now becomes a you know big, big task, right? So having just the data get pulled in isn't enough. You then need something like Script Runner, right? So Script Runner is used by everybody. And it's, we use it specifically to like automate the issue and project creation. And we augment the user experience with a lot of custom scripting because we don't want to elevate people's permissions to get some of this stuff done because some of the things we're talking about will become Jira admin tasks, right? These aren't tasks you want a regular user to do or undertake. So you really want to have a, a, a way to uh, separate that privilege and have that occur somewhere else. Because we have Script Runner and because we have elements, now we have the individual data points that are incredibly valuable that those campaign managers have put in. And now you have the ability to replicate those reliably on a large scale basis. Now what you need is the glue that holds it all together. Enter pro fields. I don't know why that keeps skipping. Terrible. Oh, it did it again. Sorry. <laughs> so pro fields. So this is our project level fields, right? This is the application that, that uh, we know and love. 
This allows us for tracking accurate and relevant information at a project level based on the information these campaign managers have, have introduced as part of the creation process. By using that standardized and reusable field layout, it now represents a common view that all the team members recognize and know how to go back and reference as needed, right? So now when a new creative maybe joins a campaign, they can immediately discover job codes. They'll immediately know who the project managers are. They'll know the, they'll know the pro overarching project information because we grabbed it from the PMs, we implemented it with Script Runner, and then we use it to create a large number of campaign projects. So let me kind of walk you through what we've done. This is sort of the introduction to just get to talk about what we've done. So let me uh, step into this. So this is kind of the 30,000 foot view of the problem. So, you know, Jira's first focus was software development. You know, it was watching bugs. It was, it was opening bug tickets. Anything that you needed to fix in the bug was part of the ticket. You know, all the information required was encapsulated in that ticket, which was great. That, that lets you solve the bug ticket and get the thing fixed. They gave you the additional metadata, like effects versions or fixed versions that would let you group bug fixes into releases. And, but that's kind of where that novelty ended. Jira didn't have a way to group campaign-based information that like we needed in a logical way. So what I mean is, say you had a fleet of creative directors that were working on like a back to home project for a very large, manu a very large clothing manufacturer and that these were gonna go out into just as many markets requiring translations and product teams and all sorts of placements, right? The collection of teams working on that data are gonna align around like common metadata sometimes. Sometimes it's gonna be around like image standards, like, hey, we have to do CMYK in this area, or perhaps it's, you know, these were static assets, or these are gonna be dynamic assets, or these are gonna be out of home assets, right? They'll align underneath a common barrier or on a common uh, banner rather. And if you could track that work as part of like a project level field, now when someone joins and they start working, they can refer to those pro fields screens that I referred to earlier. And now they can get up to speed much more quickly. It's not a matter of having to retrain them or get them up to speed because at the scale of the work that's going and the velocity of it, it's just not feasible, right? You, you couldn't bring each individual person up to speed. They sort of need to get on their feet and, and be running immediately. So let me show you what we did here. I, the, the, some screenshots will come near the end, but um, essentially what occurs is when, when a program manager needs to, you know, a, you know, a client briefs in their out of home project, right? And those program managers are now gonna need to seed the campaign in JIRA with all of the various metadata that the client wanted. They want these colors, they want it in these areas, they wanna have this behavioral you know, dynamic behind it. You know, there's a lot of stuff that gets married to these campaigns that go out. The metadata that we then pull in from like HR systems or finance systems or timesheeting systems now allow some creative ways of doing planning, right? So now a planner could look at a pro field's front end for a campaign and see, ah, I see this is out of home. I see this is gonna be in 27 markets and I see we need this amount of work. This is gonna be a large project. And because we know what large means, we know we're gonna need this many staff in these areas. You can start to generate and forecast work based on what the campaign managers are now entering because it's being correctly generated. You know it's correct because the people that had the knowledge put it in. And then with pro fields, the teams can go and reference that data as often as they need and quickly get the content to market and have happy customers, right? That's, that's where we're all trying to get to. So kind of the, the how this helps us, right? So when the program managers are able to directly populate that information, um, it occurs without support, right? We, we kind of gave them a, a portal that they can go to, to enter in all this data about all of these campaigns. And then once that's centralized there in that location, it then creates as many projects as required, as many as they have asked for. It could be for any number of things. Um, it could be for a small project. It could be for a very large project. It could be for a whole transformation. Because they have the ability to then open all those things, they may have you know, more of a need than just JIRA, right? You know, maybe there's a need to have 
Confluence as well to now describe all the Jira work. Maybe there's a Bitbucket repo because this is a website that's going out. Maybe this is a bamboo plan that goes along with a Bitbucket repo that because we're developing a you know dynamic website and we need to track all of that information. So what we kind of do is we, we, we give the campaign managers the ability to kind of create workspaces. And, and a workspace for us is nothing more than the JIRA project confluence space and the Bitbucket project and the Ops Genie team and the you know status page, right? It's all of those things kind of get grouped together and they can sort of see them all at once and see which of them are uh, in use and what's required. Because we've automated this with Script Runner, and because we have the information coming in and it's reliable, these are all accurate. They're 100% accurate, right? And now you can use that information to now correctly forecast, now to correctly plan. Um, it, it, it essentially virtualizes the agency practice of like a physical job jacket being passed around to get work done and eventually get left in a break room or in a bathroom somewhere, right? And now we have to go find the job packet. Where is it? What is it doing? That, that This helps eliminate all of that. And kind of with the advent of coronavirus, you know, teams didn't have to change the way they worked, right? They already had this centralized place where they could go and get the knowledge and then activate on that knowledge. So there wasn't really a up, there wasn't really a uh, learning curve for a lot of folks to sort of get used to pro fields and have this campaign way of working and then uh, implement it into the way that they work. Um, and kind of finally, the, some of the other things that helped us was once you had all of this data, um, rolling all of it up into reports became very, very valuable for the executives and for day-to-day -day line managers to get information uh, out of the system, right? So my graphs are nowhere near as pretty as Tom's. I apologize <laughs> right off the bat, but here you can sort of see how a executive style report would get represented, right? So there's a health status that's sort of represented here. I unfortunately had to obfuscate some of the data, but you can sort of see that like project size is represented in the executive style reports. They can get a, you know, a large holistic view of that work. And then the day-to-day -day managers can then see maybe the individual health statuses of that project, or maybe they see this is a billing code. I had to obscure that, but you know, this is like a billing code that, that, line manager now knows, oh, all the work for this piece of business is going through that job code in the finance system it's linked to. I, I now know that. Great. That's going to help us keep all of our data in one spot. So that's just some of the uh, some of the benefits, some of the reports that we provide to, to make kind of make things available. So you know, we kind of, we've rolled this out. It's in production. We use it every day. And of course, we've had feedback already. So we're kind of looking to see how we're going to improve this further. Some of the feedback we've heard indicates that, you know, we benefit from like a templating feature. So say there's a program manager that needs to create a certain class or a certain type of work that's repeated very often. You know, maybe it's a frequently asked deliverable or a fad, eh, marketing, uh, you know, presenting like a virtual Rolodex of work that they've done in the past that they can quickly refer back to and be like, oh, right, 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 right. That email thing, we, are, we already know what that takes go make another one of those, please. Don't make me go fill out all the data again. Speed it up, speed up the process of getting this stuff into the hands of the people that can do the work. And then as always, we look to ways to integrate other add-ons in the Atlassian ecosystem into this solution. Uh, some of the things that we're looking at are around uh, resourcing. So if you have maybe like a, like a resourcing system or a team-based system that records like planned work, you could then use that planned work as part of the system as well. Or perhaps you have a test management suite that now you want to implement some tests that when these campaigns go out, that they meet certain criteria. You know, creatives love lists. They love hitting to-do boxes. Um, I'm sure they'll love it. But, um, you know, all of those things come into really play there and will help us improve this and make it better. So that's kind of the solution that I've brought today. Uh, I sh hope I've kind of steeped your imagination a little bit, given you some ideas how uh, we use these tools to solve these large, large problems. Um, uh, this is a very large and complex organization. So the tool that we have to implement to fix it is just as large and just as complex. So um, I hope you found this informative. I'm open to answer any questions that you might have, and I'll turn it back over to Flora. 
Well, thank you very much, Brian. First, uh, before ah. Flora, it's going to be me. Yeah, with the exactly. Q&A. <laughs> don't worry, don't worry. That's okay. That's cool. Uh, it's nice to meet you, though. Uh, we'll, uh, we've been... We've been Music writing each other tickets. with Brian. <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> we, through our support tickets. You know, it's been a long time. Now it's really good to to put a face on the username uh, yeah. that we have in the service desk. That's, that's really nice. Well, uh, we have one question that they asked us uh, through, through the personal chat. And they're asking uh, if this implementation can work in the cloud. The implementation that you just explained does it work in the cloud? Sure. So that's a really interesting question because this is a on-premise solution. This is hosted by us. Everything that you see here is on-prem. And that's because you know we deal with our finance systems. So to make this work in the cloud, you know, like I know uh, uh, all of these applications have cloud um, uh, cloud implementations for, for their JIRA. Uh, uh, for, for the Atlassian cloud, um, to make those pull the data from those internal data points, you know, that would be your most difficult sticking point because you have to figure out how to get your wealth of information from those, you know, finance systems and internal systems, and then make it available to the teams in a, in a reliable way in cloud. That's probably going to be your, your hardest bet because even as Tom said, you know, as developers realize that servers going away, cloud parity and features becomes paramount. You, know, you can't have an on-prem solution that doesn't match the cloud solution anymore. You just you won't be able to have it. You they have to have both. So, I think yes, it will be. It might not be there yet to do it in the cloud, but the extensibility is there. And if you had enough systems or enough safeguards in place, you could certainly pull that data in and, and use it that way. Nice. That's a really, really good uh, answer. It's a really interesting answer too. Then we have another question. Uh, you see, the, the question goes like this. Can you elaborate a, a little bit on types of data you could query or store from finance systems? In oh, ab absolutely. Absolutely. Okay. So, you know, you quickly discover finance systems become a treasure trove of data, right? you can pull title. So now you can generate almost a hierarchy of charts or you can see who's uh, like who manager is. It, it, like if you're an active directory, say you could see who was managed by if you had that data populated. Um, in a finance system, you could pull someone's title. You could pull someone's time zone out of the finance system. Uh, when you're dealing with finance, you're gonna have an opportunity to pull in like planned data or like planned work. You'll have an opportunity to pull in like billing codes. So, like in our finance system, whenever a campaign gets created by a client, obviously we're going to record the work done and bill the client for the work. We need the billing code for that. So, having the finance system available with its all of its billing codes would really helps us to be like, ah, I know, you know, one of the largest things is how do we know who to bill for this, and that kind of helps solve that question. So. Uh, some of the other information you could possibly get out of a finance system. Um, uh, I already talked about the time sheeting stuff. Yeah, that's, that's really, really it. Cause you could pull in how many hours they've worked that week and you know how many hours they have left. Now you can start doing some, some planning and some velocity work. Nice. Thank you very much for answering that. Uh, then we have a question from Leo that is asking, what is the biggest challenge uh, that you faced during implementation, the implementation of profiles while implementing profiles? Uh, did you face a challenge? And if, if so, which was it or which, which one was the biggest? Absolutely. So I would have to say it's the, hmm, that's actually a really good question. I would think the most difficult challenge that we overcame as part of implementing this. So I, so legal didn't let me clear the client name that this is involved with, but to say the least, it is a globally known and recognized manufacturer of four wheeled vehicles. Let's just leave it at that. Nice. Um, that is a very large business unit. They operate in, in every market on the globe and being able to meet the requirements that are going to be 
useful for the EMEA market, for the North American market, for the Asian market, you know, all of these different markets that we have to collaborate and then work together and make sure that the solution we present works for all of them. That was the hardest task. So it became a lot of, um, okay, here's, here's what we've come up with. Do you like this? Does this work? Does this meet your requirements? We think it does because you gave them to us. Does this, you know, um, being able to go back to them and then make sure that the business unit itself was happy with the results because we have to, you know, this was in production for the model year. So we have to show that this is going to work for 2020, 2021, 2022. So it's feedback loops constantly of, hey, what worked, what didn't work, and then what can we keep going? So that could also be a challenge is, is, as Tom said again, maintainability. You know, how well can you maintain this as the years progress, as the years go on? You can have to keep this client happy. So nice. yeah, both of those things. Nice. Perfect. Thank you very much. Well, uh, we're, we're getting closer to, to the time where I need to pass the mic uh, on to Flora, but we have just one more question. Uh, they're asking if you have any agents in Northern Africa that, that they can contact you know, here in the chat. Mm -hmm. Northern Africa. Uh, you know, if uh, I'll, uh, if you can share me the name uh, for now, I'll take a look at that and uh, I'll see what we can come up with. I know we have some entities based there. Uh, I would have to get you exactly which company it was because there's a whole bunch of them, but I, yeah. I, I believe there are. Yes, uh, I'll, I'll get back with you. Perfect. Thank you very much. We'll save that and, and send it back to you. Thank you very much, Brian. It was a really interesting uh, uh, chat. It was a really interesting presentation, uh, really well explained, uh, and with a lot of information. And it 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 uh, it makes us see uh, what you can achieve and what you can do with all these tools and and you know a lot of knowledge. Thank you very much, Brian. Um, back to you, Flora. Yeah, thank you, both of you guys. And uh, obviously, uh, Brian, really appreciate your use case, really informative and helpful. Um, I hope we can get out most uh, information from this use case in the future. So let's let's get so, into that. But uh, again, thank you very much for, for this great presentation.